So tonight's film was Oliver Stone's 1991 uh, kind of historical uh, film JFK, which I realize now was it today is the um, the um, anniversary of the assassination, and um, I don't know if they planned that. I mean, I know they planned this to be the last film, and they always do the films on Tuesdays. But, uh, you know, maybe they maybe they planned it. Who knows? They probably did. Um, this was at the Midtown Art Cinema here in Atlanta. It's uh, directed by Oliver Stone. It's written by Oliver Stone and Zachary Scalar. And it's based on two books, one by Jim Garrison, who is uh, played by Kevin Costner in the film, and the other by Jim Mars. It very much so is about the conspiracy theory um, side of maybe this is why why and how Kennedy was assassinated. So the very first thing you have to know going into this film is do not take it as history. It is all conjecture. It is conjecture put, put together using some real stuff. Um, a lot of the facts in this um, film have been proven to be not facts and a lot of the things that have been presented as facts have been proven to be complete fabrications. So if you go in realizing that this is just a fever dream of maybe and what ifs and just go with it that way, you can enjoy this film. It's it's a breezy three hours. Now I say that having yesterday watched a two and a half hour Brazilian film that I didn't want to end. This is the same kind of thing where it's just it's just so so effortlessly edited and paced that you just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going and then it's three hours and I watched the director's cut so it's like over three hours and and then it ends and you're like wait what it's over oh my god wait I've been here this all long what um and part of it like so the big point is the editor and the editor won an Oscar for their work um it was two editors Joe Hushing and, P and Pietro Scalia they won the Best Editing Oscar, rightly so. Robert Richardson won the Cinematography Oscar. He used many film stocks and things to recreate stuff and to give you this kind of mishmash feeling that it's a documentary, even though a lot of it is recreations. Um, where was I going to go with this? Uh, it kind of made me want to read the Warren Commission, to be honest. And then I was like, oh shit, it's 26 volumes? That's a lot. But... Um, makes me want to read it. Kind of like Hamilton makes me want to read the Federalist Papers, and I was thinking, like, how have I never read the Federalist Papers? I feel like I should read these things. Um, this is a great cast. So Tommy Lee Jones was nominated for an Oscar for his performance in the film. Um, but this, the cast also includes, like I said, Kevin Costner, Kevin Bacon, Lori Metcalf, Sissy Spacek, uh, for, like, two seconds. Um, what's his name who shares my birthday? Uh, why am I forgetting his name? Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, really show-stopping performance from Joe Pesci. Uh, oh my god, everybody else. Michael Roker. Um, Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau, not together. Donald Sutherland, Ed Asner. John Candy, in a completely un-John Candy, uh, sort of s performance. He was great. Uh, Wayne Knight. And a very small, uh, wonderful little cameo at the beginning from Sally Kirkland. I love Sally Kirkland. She's such a good actress. But my favorite performer in the whole film is Gary Oldman as Oswald. Gary Oldman is amazing. He is such a good actor. Like, such a good actor. And, um... He, like, he's just so good in this. Like, every time I see him on the screen, I'm like, damn it, Gary Oldman. You're such a good actor. Shit. So, um, he's good. That's pretty much what I have to say there. Um, what else was I going to say? There's a lot of timely things where they talk about, um, sort of the way the media runs with stories before they really have all the facts and all kinds of things that I think are still issues with the media and um, whether they're running conspiracy theories or not, they're still like 
false reports all the time um, because it's, you know, you got to get the news right away and then actual in-depth reporting is sort of not, like, those are for, like, special reports that, you know, we've been working on this for a year and then you'll maybe read it kind of stuff nowadays. Um, I, I For the most part, I like Oliver Stone as a filmmaker. I've seen a handful of his films. Alexander's a mess. But um, I remember really loving Platoon when I first saw it in high school, but it's a film that I haven't revisited, so I'm not, not sure if it holds up. But um, I saw Salvador a few years ago, and I quite liked it. And I am um, pro Natural Born Killers. It's a bizarre, crazy-ass movie, but I really love that film. So, you know, I saw him talk once when I was in Berkeley. He came to talk about Alexander. I hadn't seen the film yet. But um, he was really pleading with the students about, like, the importance of, of getting your the cut that you want to be in theaters. So uh, I, always, I always remember that and I always just think how, like, earnest he was. Um, he's an artist, I guess. So I have not really said much. Uh, I guess my, my main critique about this film is uh, on... What is it, John Williams? The John Williams' score kind of bugged me. There were moments where it's great and beautiful and really works, but there were several moments where I felt like, and this is maybe not John Williams' fault and more uh, Oliver Stone is the director's fault uh, or whoever is in charge of these moments, but uh, a combination, goat fuck, if you will, where the score is trying to make you feel. And I talked about this with Arrival. I really don't like it when a film score is trying to make you feel rather than augmenting what the what the scene is making you feel already like if the scene is moving you emotionally and then the score comes in and ups that to 11 that's a great moment if you're not feeling anything and the score comes in and says you should feel this that's not good filmmaking and I hate that and there were several moments where the score came in saying you should feel this right now and I'm like don't tell me what to feel, score. Make me feel it with the images. That's your job, Oliver Stone. So, um, but, so the, the guy who hosts these things, like, not my favorite, like, movie host ever, but sometimes he says really interesting things, and he was comparing Oliver Stone to Spike Lee in that they have a very large, um, like, variety of kinds of films that they make, and they're very hit and miss, but in every one of their films, there's at least like 10, 20 minutes of just pure brilliant cinema. And I gotta I gotta agree with the with the handful of films I've seen from both of them that I'm like, that's a fair assessment. I think so. Um so anyways, this was Oliver Stone's JFK from 1991. Uh I've now I now only have 52 uh out of how many is it? Let's see here. I have 52 of 530 Best Picture nominees left to watch, which means, if you can't do math really fast, I have seen 478 films that have been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. That's a lot of films. <laughs> I, have, I have 52 left. So actually, if I did this next year and did one film a week uh, from the list, I'd be finished by the end of next year. Hmm. Except for all the ones that are going to be from this year, unless I watch them in advance. Damn it. Well, almost. Almost. Anyways, I'm getting there. Uh, soon. So this was, this is Oliver Stone's JFK. Hit me up with your, with your thoughts. Um, it's a very controversial film. Oh, I also read that the, uh, Assassination Committee papers, which are the ones from the 70s, are supposed to be released originally they're supposed to be released in 2029 but because of this film and and like shit that got rolling after this film got released they they pushed that back to or push it down to uh 2017 so next year we get to know shit so maybe you know i don't know what we'll know but we'll know more will it will we ever actually know who killed kennedy i don't know I mean, and, the, and the, the, the thing that this film posits, whether you believe its answer to this question, I think the question that it asks is 
almost more important. I agree that it is more important than who killed Kennedy, but why? I think, and I think that's true with a lot of things. Like, an action is an action, but why? Why did that action happen? And I think, I think that's the question everyone's always afraid to ask when things happen. When it's a natural disaster and you say, why did this happen? It's like, you know, who knows? Because you can't predict that. But when it's uh, somebody did something, there has to be a reason why. And and that's something that we, you know, you can sort through all the um, evidence and in, and until you actually, you know, find who did it or just prove that Oswald did it and figure out, you still have to figure out, or definitively prove that Oswald did it. You still have to figure out why. And that's a question, will we ever know? I don't know. Um, but that's the question I, this film wants to know. This film has an answer for why. Um, but I think... If you don't buy what this film is saying, it's still a question that should be asked. Uh, this might be too long for YouTube at this point. I don't know. Oops. Might have to edit. Anyways, have a good night.